Welcome to the Love Your Marriage Podcast, hosted by Joseph and Crystal Gruber. We are here to awaken authentic Catholic culture through holy matrimony. And that begins with our marriage, and now yours. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Direct, O Lord, our actions by thy holy inspiration, and carry them on by thy gracious assistance, that every word and work of ours may begin in thee, and by thee be happily ended. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Welcome to Love Your Marriage Podcast. I am Joseph Gruber, half the podcast, the half that is still recording, because my wife is taking care of our children and all of the back-end parts of our business, and that, by default, makes me the public face of our marriage ministry. So, if you're watching this on YouTube, my apologies. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about the question that you maybe have never really thought about. What is the soundtrack of your marriage? If someone set the scenes with you and your spouse to music, what music would they choose? As you come through the front door, is it the Imperial March from Star Wars? Dun, 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 dun. Or is it, I'm walking on sunshine, whoa. What kind of music is accompanying you as you walk through your front door? When you're having a serious discussion with your spouse, is it the music of the Avengers, the, uh, the music of an ultimate team-up? I don't actually remember how the Avengers music goes. I remember it gets you excited, but it's, for me, it, at least, ultimately forgettable music. Or is it the music of Mission Impossible, right? Uh, how does Mission Impossible go? I, I knew this before I pressed record. Um, nope, it's totally out of my head. The music of Mission Impossible, <laughs> totally out of my head. Uh, anyways, it's something where you're getting hyped up about the fact that you and your spouse are on an epic mission together. And even though the content of your discussion is serious, you know, it's going to explode at the end of the, the message, whatever, at the end of the recording, uh, you, you two are zoned in, you are, you are locked in, you are on mission together. Or is it, whenever you're having a serious discussion with your spouse, is it the duel of the fates from Star Wars, The Phantom Menace, uh, the the choral arrangement that lets you know that this is the ultimate fight of good versus evil, you know, a young Obi Wan Kenobi with his master Qui Gon Jinn versus Darth Maul, the the first Sith presence that they've seen in, well, who knows how long because the timeline has gotten messy with the additional pieces from Disney Star Wars. Anyway. Is that the sense that you have when you're having a serious discussion? That it's one side trying to save everything and the other side trying to destroy everything? Is that is that what's accompanying your discussion? I hope not. I really do. I hope that's not the kind of thing. A- unless it's the duel of the fates because it's, you know, you two are the, the Jedi who are working together against the evil. In which case, that would be a fine way to have that accompany your serious discussions. Anyway, directors, editors, composers, they they try to match the mood and the tone of what's happening on the screen to music. And the music should evoke the same mood, the same tone as what's going on. One of the weird things about that lovely trilogy, Guardians of the Galaxy, is that James Gunn had in mind a whole bunch of music as set pieces for the action. And that shapes the action and shapes our understanding of the action. And maybe you've seen clips of scenes where someone else comes in and switches out the soundtrack. So whether it's a a very dramatic, important scene where the music is all piano and subtle and they decide to put in like carnival, carnival music instead. And you realize, oh, that changes everything. Uh, So even though everything that's happening on the screen plays out the same way, we leave with a very different impression of the scene because of the music that is superimposed upon it. So, when we're thinking about our marriage, what kind of song are we keeping alive in our hearts? What kind of music do we think would accompany our interactions with our spouse? 
if a director came in and spent a day watching you and your spouse interact, who do you think they would call up to do the music? Would they call up, I don't know, Danny Alfman, who does a lot of the Tim Burton music? Would they call up Howard Shore, who did the music for The Lord of the Rings, because you guys are so epic, or because you're so cozy, hobbit-like people? Uh, would it be just some random classical pieces? Would it be, I don't know, the Cry of the Valkyrie from Wagner's um, work? Hopefully, hopefully not that. All this to say, ladies and gentlemen, dear listener, we have some amount of control over the mood and the tone that we carry with us in our interactions with our spouse. We can choose a different song. We can choose a different way of approaching, a different style, a different intonation. The, the musicality in our home is affected by the tone of our voice. It's affected by the mood that we bring. This is just a random aside. I remember back when I was in high school, I would read this blog called Interesting Thing of the Day. And one of the articles was about how the, the different appliances in our home, our refrigerator, our, uh, our microwave, uh, our computers, they have different frequencies that they're emitting, right? Like they're, they're humming. There's a hum of electronics. There's a hum of the furnace. There's a hum of the air conditioner. And the, the different frequencies aren't always harmonious. And so there's like literal disharmony in a home. And that blew my mind. I never had thought about the musicality of the, the appliances. But do you consider your musicality? Do you consider your tone of voice and how you can use a different tone of voice to convey a completely different thing, even if all of the words are the same? Uh, and you, you might not think that it matters very much, but check out some of these clips where they switch out the soundtracks. Everything changes. You, you don't take them as seriously if the, the music doesn't fit, or you take them too seriously if the music doesn't fit. So this is an invitation for you to step back and say, what kind of music do I even want to have in my home? What kind of soundtrack do I want to be creating with my spouse? These are not things that have to happen by default, right? Like your appliance, it has a, a particular frequency at which it's going to work. I don't know how much fiddling you can do. The The electrical engineers and the other people listening to this, you, you probably are, you know, tearing your hair out saying, of course you can change it. I, I don't know how. Uh, but you can change yourself. You can change what music you're bringing to the table. If your spouse is always operating in something of a minor key, maybe just maybe the way that you interact will produce a more beautiful harmony if you're conscientious about it. Maybe they're the upbeat one who is always singing in some kind of major key and you're the one trying to bring it down. So ask yourself, is that what you want to be doing? If it is, great and be more intentional about it, even more so. And if it isn't, think, how can I approach my life with this sort of musical uh, approach? If you're worried about this, if you're, you're wondering how to do this, uh, you might not like this suggestion. I'm not saying you have to do this suggestion. I do want people to do it, though. I really do. It doesn't have to be you, but you're listening to this podcast, so it might be you. Try singing with your spouse. Uh, you might not be very good at it. Your spouse might not be very good at it. It's still good to sing. It's still good to sing with one another. So maybe try that as a first step. Uh, you don't have to. That, that's just a random suggestion from this podcaster to you. But the, the more serious suggestion is, after this podcast ends, take a moment and think, oh yeah, when I'm talking to my spouse... Is, is, am I striking the kind of tone that I wish that I were? If somebody were filming, what kind of music would they accompany my speech, my actions? And am I, am I okay with that? Do I, do I need to revisit this? Do I need to rethink how I'm approaching my spouse? Because you, you, you only have this life to live. 
you only have this spouse to love in this way. And you, you might as well make a gloriously epic soundtrack. You might as well make a playlist that will be the envy of everyone who comes across the two of you, where they can hear you basically singing your love to one another. The podcast isn't over yet. You can keep thinking about this question, but I wanted to make a couple little random plugs. We have a very small audience because this is a new podcast. If you're listening to this, we would love it if you would rate and review the podcast, if you could share it with friends, if you find it at all helpful. If you don't find it helpful and you're still listening, I I, I don't really want to question what you're doing, but a little bit, I, I do a little bit want to question what you're doing right now because there's so much out there. You could be listening to so much else or you could not be listening to anything. But the fact that you're listening now, hopefully that means that there's a reason and hopefully it's a reason good enough to share. Why do I want you to share? I want to serve as many people who want to be served by us. But that requires us needing help to find those people because people don't just magically know that we exist and what we're doing and how we're trying to awaken an authentic Catholic culture through holy matrimony. So that's the first thing. If you would be so kind as you're thinking about the soundtrack of your marriage, also rate and review and send this to at least one or two other people. Then the other thing is if you are a Catholic married man, that is a Catholic husband, I would be delighted to talk with you. There are a lot of things that we have in the works for the upcoming few months and into the next few years, and that will only be improved if I have a chance to talk with more Catholic husbands. Great co-benefit is that I will be asking a lot of good questions, not prying questions, good questions, thoughtful questions, that hopefully will help to clarify your role as a husband and what your goals are and how you can love your spouse better because I'm on your team on, on that one. I want to help you to love your spouse better. And I don't know if my track record is very long, but so far it's been pretty good that the men that I work with, they, their wives are appreciative. And uh, I think the men are too. But my wife hears from from the wives, that they are appreciative. So that's what I've got. I'll put a link in the show notes for signing up for times for that. We have a couple of retreats in the Jackson, Michigan area. So if you're in Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Pennsylvania, Toledo, uh, Pennsylvania, Illinois, and you want to make a drive out, we have a couple of retreats coming up. Uh, I'll put a link to our events page, which we just added to our website and we'll be adding more events as we plan them out and as we get links for people to, to register for them. I think that's all I've got. Your life, your marriage is important, and it is worth loving. And your spouse is worth loving, even in the very intonation of your voice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This has been a production of Our Outpost, a ministry to awaken authentic Catholic culture through holy matrimony. Please like, share, subscribe, rate, and review if you found this helpful and encouraging. Find out more at OurOutpost.org.